Here's Frank Lloyd Wright in 1909, the year he arrived in the Bitterroot Valley for a three-day stay that resulted in two projects, a summer colony called Como Orchard near Darby and a Bitterroot town near Stevensville. Montana was in the middle of an apple boom at this time, which is why Wright was here. By this time, Wright was already famous in Chicago for his prairie style buildings. This is the 1902 Hurtley House in Oak Park, Illinois. Note the modernist style, the horizontal planes, the hip roof with overhanging eaves, the natural building materials, brick in this case, and the elegant strip windows. At the same time, he also built this small lakeside cottages in Michigan and Wisconsin called Rustics. This is the Walter Gertz Cottage in Michigan. We will see these reproduced in Montana. Note the style, the hip roof with overhangs, natural board and batten wood siding for the cabins, and stone chimney. Wright was also defining at the same, designing at the same time large clubhouses in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and Como, and Estes Park, Colorado. This is the River Forest Tennis Club in Chicago. And I want to point out the overlapping wood siding which he used in Montana too, which we'll see. Now we turn to Montana. Here you can see Wright's drawing for the first project, the Como Orchard Summer Colony near Darby. Now you can see it includes a clubhouse and 51 cabins you can't see. You can see some of them uh, scattered around in the yard in front of it. Um, unfortunately, of the 51 cabins that were to be built, only 12 were built. Here's a photograph of the project being built in 1909. Wright's idea here for this project was a community of like-minded individuals living in their own cabins but taking meals together in the clubhouse. They would buy 10-acre plots and the development country would help them take care of the apple trees. Now here is um, the photo of the central clubhouse when it was just finished in 1912. It's 215 feet long, has two dining rooms coming off the two-story lobby. Note that the design, design comes from the construction elements, the distinctive window patterns, the overlapping natural board siding, and the overhanging hip roof with white eaves. Here's a, a recent photograph of one of the cabins. It's a two-bedroom cottage, which you can rent today. It was cabin number 3C, and this is one of only a handful of right buildings you can actually stay in in the United States where you can spend the night. Notice the strip windows and the overlapping wood siding. Here's the interior of that same cabin looking from the living room to the enclosed porch. Wright liked to use glass doors and partitions rather than walls to divide rooms. Note the distinctive window patterns. There's a rock fireplace that you cannot see and built-in cabinet furniture and cabinets that you can't see either. Um, here's the other remaining cabin at Como Orchard. It's a small one bedroom unit with fireplace, no kitchen. It usually, originally it was the land office. Um, there are, these two cabins are all that are, are left since the clubhouse and the other cabins were torn down by 1945 due to the failure of the apple boom. Here's Como Orchard today. Now it's called Alpine Meadows Resort. It's a guest ranch and it was owned by Charles Rowland. I'm not sure who owns it now. But um, Wright really knew how to pick beautiful settings, as you can see, between the sapphires and the bitter roots. He was bringing out to this place his friends, Chicago professors, to be the people he brought out. I want now to turn to Wright's second bitter root project. This is the Big Ditch. It's a 56 mile irrigation canal running from Lake Como to Bitterroot Town down near Stevensville. And Bitterroot Town is a larger scheme, a mountain town of a thousand people and 15,000 acres of apple orchards. Here's the center of Bitterroot Town, uh, the Bitterroot Inn. It's actually the only building that was built in Bitterroot Town because the project failed. But we did get this in. Unfortunately, the inn was uh, destroyed by a, a fire, forest fire in 1924. Here's another view of the inn. It's 126 foot long, but half as long as the Como Orchard Clubhouse. You see the patterns have distinctive pa uh, patterns, the windows, and there's board and batten siding. And uh, there were plans for cabins here too, designed by Wright, and a whole town of buildings being designed by Wright, but none were built as far as we can tell. I want to mention there's one other rumored Wright house in the Bitterroot, and that's this house on 3rd Street in Hamilton, South 3rd Street. Has not been substantiated, but Wright's host at the time, Missoula architect Perry Ansley, claims he asked Wright to design this house for his daughter. And it sure looks like a Wright Prairie house. 
Now we jump to 1961 and Wright's third project in Montana, the Lockridge Clinic, Clinic and Eye Clinic in Whitefish, designed by Wright in 1958, the year before he died. Uh, this has Wright's Usonian uh, grammar. Uh, it's a little simpler with three materials, brick, glass, and concrete. Here's another view of the clinic when it turned into a bank after Dr. Lockridge's death. Uh, later, it became the Morrison and Brampton Law Office in Whitefish. This building was unfortunately the, uh, torn down two years ago to make room for a new office building. Uh, joined some other famous Wright lost buildings like uh, Larkin Building. Here's the building's interior when it was the bank. Note the clear story windows up above with the, cut, with the cutout patterns for natural sunlight to come in. Note the brick fireplace. You probably can't see it, but on the right there's a brick fireplace. And also the floor was typical, the glassy concrete. This is Wright's post-war Usonian phase house. To give you an example of what Usonian style was, this is the um, Pope Leahy House in, in Alexandria, Virginia. Note the horizontal low pitch design with the board batten interior. Um, the, um, the prior, his styles changed over time, but they always had the same grammar. This is the year before he died. This is the year he designed himself, the Lockridge Clinic, and sent an expert out to help with the construction. We don't have much evidence of Frank Lloyd Wright left in Montana, but we do have those two cabins out of 15 structures originally built. 